Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Minnesota Tens discussion video. This is the game review from the first game in the Cleveland Minnesota series. Minnesota Twins did lose last night 5 to 2. Minnesota only scored 2 runs on 5 hits, which is not very good, and then Cleveland 5 runs on 6 hits. So again, not very not very great. I mean, they were obviously very more productive because almost every one of their hits was a home run. Um cuz they had 4 of them on 5 runs and We'll talk about that in a second, but I mean, you just look at this game and you're like, huh, very, very low scoring, very low hits. This is the first time in a month, actually, that we have not scored three runs. So that talks about the run support that we did not get tonight. Uh, and I think that really affected Devin Smeltzer. We'll talk about him in one second, but if you look at the, if you look at the box score, right, this is a close game, right? But... Every single run that was scored came off of a home run. So the Cleveland Indians hit four home runs and one guy was on base. So that makes it five. And Minnesota hit two solo shots. How about that? I mean, that's that's a boring game in my opinion. I want to know what you guys think about this. I'm old school, right? I'm, I'm a fan of... I am a fan of the money ball kind of situation. But I'm a fan of like it's a reverse money ball. So I'll just give you my take on this really quickly. I'm a speed contact stealing base defensive guy. I'm a Mookie Betts kind of guy. He can hit home runs. Mike Trout's a good example, but he's just, he can do everything. Uh, I guess so can Mookie Betts, but you know what I'm saying? D Gordon, these guys who slap shot the ball, Ichiro Suzuki, get on base, steal the bases. They're so good in the field. Um, and I feel like Mookie Betts, D Gordon, they're the leaders of those, those categories on their team for a reason, right? And those are the kind of hits that I want to see. I want to see runs, stolen bases, triples, doubles. I like home runs, but when every single run scores, I mean, what do you do for the first inning, the third inning, the fifth inning, the sixth inning, when nobody scored? It's like boring, but I mean, I like a pitcher's duel too, so it was it was good, but it's just I want to see, you know, stolen bases. I want to see Buxton run a little bit. I want to see all these guys hitting in the gaps like, like we did against Chicago a couple weeks ago when we had five or six doubles in a game, and that's awesome. But when you hit two home runs and that's your entire offense, that's not it's not very good. So let's talk about Smeltzer. Uh, I don't think that this game was entirely his fault. Obviously, he did give up four home runs and five of them, uh, five hits. Uh, five runs did score as they all did come off the home runs. But realistically, I don't think he did that bad. If you want to talk about Pineda, right? This is the guy who he replaced. Pineda has done well as of late. I hope he can stay, you know, at that spot where he has done well in the last four games. That's the Pineda I would like to see out of the five spot. But it also relies on run support, right? Like I said, this is the first time in a month that we have not scored three runs in a game. That's because every single game, Especially when we score first, like we did in this game. We score multiple runs, and we score more than three, right? This game, we did score one home run in the in the, in the the second inning, and we got out to a lead. But then, Smeltzer, he gives up a home run to Francisco Lindor, right? I think it was Francisco. Yeah, Francisco Lindor. Then he gave up another home run to Francisco Lindor. But it, it And that's another thing. We'll talk about the, 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 the guys on base here first, but... He gave up five hits. Four of them were home runs. That's not... Now, granted, that's not the greatest thing in the world. You don't want to see a guy hit, you know, four home runs off of you. But when they're all solo shots, they don't really matter. And I'm not going to say that the Twins, you know, they had a bad game. I'll say that. But I'm not going to say that the Twins, you know, they didn't go out there and try to get hits, right? I mean, they struck out a lot. It looked like Bieber was on. Um, he had a great night. He only gave up five hits of his own, struck out seven in seven innings. He's very he did he had a good night, right? But for them to go out there and only put up two runs, that is it's so much pressure on the pitcher to do well, especially on a pitcher like Smeltzer, who's not gonna blow you away. He only throws eighty eight to ninety two miles an hour and he relies on his off speed pitch, right? He only got two strikeouts tonight, three walks. Maybe that's because they read the scouting report on him. Another thing about it is, you know, when he pitched in Milwaukee or against Milwaukee, he was at home against these guys like Yelich, Mustakis, 
other guys, I guess, I don't know the entire Milwaukee lineup, but they're left-handed. I get that Kane was right-handed, you know, whoever else, Orlando, Sia, Arcia, whatever, is right-handed. Um, Grandal is a switch hitter. But you look at that and you're like, okay, he did well versus, you know, Yelich, who didn't get a hit off of him. And he struck him out because he was left-handed. It's harder for a left-handed batter to do something against a left-handed pitcher. Francisco Lindor's a switch hitter, probably one of the best shortstops in the game. He hit two home runs off of him. What can you do? I mean, you just kind of tip your cap and be like, hey, he's a better hitter. And he also had a double. It's like, that was off of Harper. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, he had a great night. Tip your cap, okay? Um, and, and, and when you're not getting this run support and one guy goes off, you just have to deal with it. And it happens sometimes. And unfortunately, it's not the greatest thing, but... What, you, what can you do, right? I mean, I'm sitting here telling you what happened, and there's nothing that they could do about it. Obviously, you know, maybe just stop trying to hit home runs. Maybe that's what they were trying to do, being down, trying to get to that three-run mark, and they've done well as when they've gotten there, but it just you can't do it every time, and it happens. So the last thing I want to say is that, like I said, Pineda has done well. I want to see him, you know, get to this spot where he's been pitching at, the rest of the season. I think that's a great five spot. Devin Smeltzer pitched well against Milwaukee. I don't think he did that bad today. Four four home runs off five hits. They were only hitting home runs off of him. And it, it happens. He pitched 82 balls. That's it. He only threw 82. 49 of them were strikes. That's, that's not great, but it's not bad either. And I, I, that tells you that he works quickly. He gets outs early in the count. He does walk. He did walk a couple of guys uh, to die, uh, to last night, but other than that, he, he only threw 82 pitches through six and one-thirds innings, and if he didn't give up those two home runs to knock him out, this is a brand new ball game, three to two. This game wasn't out of reach for us, and then when we put in Harper, he did good, but I feel like putting in Duffy, it didn't really give up. You know, we were down by a three, and we weren't giving up, but he doesn't come in and pitch in games when we're leading three to one or two to one, right? He comes in when we're down or we're up by quite a bit. And he did well, right? He pitched one inning and he struck out one guy. And I'm not saying that he, he's not good, but I'm just saying he's the kind of guy we bring in to, to not use, you know, Rogers or Parker or somebody like that. So I don't want to say we gave up, but, you know, by putting him in, it's like, okay, we can't hit the ball. Well, I guess we'll uh, get you some work, Duffy. So, that's just how I, I view that. But let's talk about hitting really quickly. Uh, Bieber's also 5-2, and two, so, I mean, he's a good pitcher. Uh, Kepler, 0 for 4. He struck out three times tonight. Polanco, 1 for 4, also struck out once. Cruz, on his debut day, back uh, with the Twins, three strikeouts. That's not good. Uh, and, and you can just see the top of the lineup. What is that? Seven strikeouts of our 10 came from the top three guys in the lineup. That's not very good. I actually really like this lineup. Um, if you put Sano on the bench, put Gonzalez at third, and then put Crone at first, that's my lineup. But this is a very solid lineup. I like this lineup. This is this is where I want to see these guys in the lineup as well. I like it. It just happened that we didn't that we ran into a wall last night, right? So Polanco uh, and Cruz didn't do great. Uh, neither did Kepler. But then Rosario came up, and I was watching the highlights. He is now tied for the AL lead again after Sanchez hit a home run. Um, I don't know if it was last night or a couple nights ago, but he's at 18 now as well as Rosario. So that was great for him. Um, one for four tonight or last night. That's what you want to see on nights when you struggle is uh, you want to see him do well. And at that point, it was three to one. So he got us back into the game. It was It was a great shot. It's just I wish we could have done a little bit more with it, right? Could have gotten Cruz on base or could have gotten, you know, Kepler or Polanco on base at the time, and it would have changed, again, the entire outcome of the game. Garver, I picked Garver. I hadn't picked somebody in, like, three weeks, and then I picked one guy, and it was Garver, and he went 0 for 3. Um, it happens. Uh, then Gonzalez, he had the best night of the Twins last night. He went 2 for 4 with an RBI and a run with his home run that he got us out in front. That's number 7 for him. Um, the MLB record, by the way, is 15 players or 9 players. 9 players, excuse me, 9 players with 15 home runs. We have 
what is it, 12 with six already uh, or more. So that's great. Um, looks like we'll be breaking that record. Uh, and two of them, no, Rosario is the only one with 18. And then it goes to Crone with 13, I believe. So like three or four guys are like knocking on the door with Crow's Kep uh, Cron, Kepler, uh, a Crone Kepler and uh, Scope. So there you go. Uh, Sano went 0 for 2 with a walk. Scope went 1 for 3. And Buxton went 0 for 3. And you could just tell how dominant uh, Bieber was and the rest of the Indians pitching staff because if you look down at uh, Buxton, he only got three at bats last night. When was the last time that Buxton and the rest of the guys down at the bottom of the lineup only got three at bats? That's, that's crazy. I mean, Think about how dominant this team is, man. I don't know. Can somebody find that for me? That would be an, that would be the best stat to find. How many times has Buxton or the bottom three in the lineup only gotten three at bats in a game? So if you stayed till the end here, I really much I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you guys thought of the game. There weren't very many highlights. It was a very I wouldn't say boring game, but very you know not exciting. <laughs> um, well, hopefully we can get a win and bounce back again tonight. We usually are pretty good after losses. So hopefully we can, we can bounce back with Perez and Barrios back on the mound and take the series um, and, and go back to Detroit now. So that's all I got for you today. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we will see you later for another couple of, couple of videos today.